In this video, we're going to take a look at another type of MDF raised panel door. I released a video yesterday that uh, showed how to create a raised panel MDF door using V-bits. But in this video, I want to talk about how to do it without V-bits with a design that's a little bit more complicated. So I have this drawing here. I know it's very crude. Uh, I apologize, but I am definitely not an artist. Uh, this is a cross section of what the door needs to look like. So basically in this case, I have a door that I'm trying to replicate. So in, in, in a case where maybe we're rebuilding a cabinet for a kitchen or we're adding a cabinet and we can no longer get that door uh, from a manufacturer, all we need to do is really take some dimensions with some calipers or a, a good tape measure and uh, create a cross section and we can easily duplicate that door. So right now the door is 19 wide by 26 inches tall, that's overall. And the cross section we have from the outside of the door, um, the style all the way around is 2.25 inches. Then it drops down 0.4 inches straight down. Now the other video I did uh, had a, a bevel on uh, both sides of the pocket for the raised panel. This particular door goes down 0.4 inches and then it's flat on the bottom by 0.5 inches and then there's an angle. Now I don't know what this angle is, but what I did do was measure from this point right here where the angle starts on the bottom and come over to the top where the angle meets the, uh, the, the flat top and it came out to 1.25 inches. So these dimensions are really all I need to get started uh, to design this job. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to shrink this down a little bit and we'll keep this in the corner of the screen while we're working on this job. All right, so we're gonna create a new file well, I guess it's not going to stay on the screen, but it'll be there. Um, the first thing we need to do is create the file. It's 19 inches wide by 26 inches tall, three quarter inch piece of MDF. I'm going to create my first uh, vector uh, from the lower corner. We're going to make this zero, zero. So it starts in this corner and I want a rectangle that is 16 by 26 inches. Click create. And I'm sorry, 19 by 26 inches. All right, so we'll get rid of this first one. I have my vector there. Now on this drawing that I have, I can see that the next vector I need is going to be 2.25 inches from the outside. So we're going to highlight this vector. We're going to go here to offset inward and we're going to move that in 2.25 inches. Then I look and I see the next vector I need is going to be this lower point of the flat part of the pocket, which is 0.5 inches from this 2.25. So we're going to go over to here and we're going to make this 0.5 inches and offset that. And again, we want to make sure sharp offset corners and select new are both uh, selected there. So I've got that vector. Now I want to come over and there's one more dimension that I need. And that's the, um, the vector that represents the rectangle of the uh, top flat surface of the raised panel. Uh, and that is going to be 1.25 inches from this 0.5. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go 1.25 and offset. So now I have the vectors that I need to, uh, to make this. What I'm going to do is click Control C and I, that way I make a copy of this inner rectangle. Uh, and I'm going to hit N to go to node editing and I need to cut each of these corners so that they are an individual. I want four individual lines here instead of one rectangle. So we're going to come over here, uh, hover over the black square. We're going to hit the letter C as in Charlie and that's going to cut that vector. And then we're going to go over each corner and we're going to hit C and we're going to cut that. If I hit escape, I go back to my normal arrow and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to highlight both of these. Now, one thing I want to know is the dimension 
of this rectangle. So if you look down here in the corner, this is 13 and a half by 20 and a half. Um, because that is how I am going to uh, set up these lines. So we're going to highlight both the top and bottom lines here. Go over to set selected object size. Make sure link XY is not checked. We want to make sure that we are anchoring from the center so that when I change this dimension, the line uh, expands in both directions evenly. We're going to make the width on this 13.5. And we're going to, we already hit enter, so that's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and select the two vertical lines. And we are going to make this 20.5 and hit apply. Okay, so now you can see I've got the lines actually extend. These uh, lines extend to the edge of this rectangle all the way around. Now, I copied the original uh, rectangle here, but... Now that I think about it, I don't really need it. So normally I would just paste it, control V, and then that rectangle would be back there. But I'm not going to use it for anything, so I, I really don't need to do that. Now, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to determine what the angle is going to be right here. And the easiest way to do that is we can see right now that we've got two dimensions we need. One, one and a quarter inches is the total run for that angle from the top to the bottom. And the rise on that is 0.4 inches. So what we're going to do is create a rectangle over here. And we're going to have that be um, 1.25 times 2. So we'll do 2.5 and 0.4 inches tall. Click apply. Now I'll zoom in, go over to the line tool. And we're going to go from this side, this corner, and a snap. So you want to make sure that these two snap buttons are engaged on the top here, so it automatically snaps to that corner. Then when you bring your mouse to the uh, bottom line, you'll notice that it automatically snaps to it. But as you move it uh, left and right, it'll come to a point where that pointer turns into a crosshair. That means you're in the center. So we're going to go ahead and click our mouse button there. Now we'll hit the space bar, and then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to go back to where that crosshair is, click the mouse button, and then go to the opposite corner. All right, so I have two separate vectors here that represent the angle that this uh, raised panel needs to have. So what we're going to do here that's a little different, in the last video I showed you how to do this using a V-bit. And with a V-bit, you have to have a specified angle, so 45 degrees, uh, if you're doing a 90 degree V-bit, I was using 110 degree, which is a 55 degree angle uh, for that panel. And it doesn't, it, if you were making all new panels for something, it would be fine. You can use that. But if you're trying to match something and you don't know exactly what that panel is, because keep in mind, when they do raise panels, typically the panels are done on a shaper or they're done on a table saw. So they could just set this angle to whatever they want and then cut it out. And when we're using a CNC machine, we don't have that ability. So as an example, this angle right here is measuring from this point up to the angle, it's 17.745 degrees. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know of any V-bit that has exactly that angle, okay? So this way we don't need to concern ourselves with the angle, we just need to concern ourselves with this particular vector and the angle is already set for us. So the way we're going to do this design is we are going to use a vectric uh, profile, uh, I'm sorry, toolpath called the molding toolpath. So we're going to pin this up and we're going to click on the molding toolpath. Now the first thing we need to do is select the tool. So for this I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose. You can use uh, eighth inch or you can go up to three eighths or half inch, whatever you want. The, the problem is the smaller the ball nose you use, the more, uh, the longer it's going to take to to make the angles all the way around. The larger the ball nose you use, uh, you you have a little bit of extra overrun, let's call it, right here. And I just find that for this particular type of job, a quarter inch ball nose just works really well for that. Now, on the ball nose, I've got my pass depth set to an eighth of an inch. 
Um, and then I've got my uh, step over at 20%. Now, I would suggest with your machine and, and your tooling to experiment with the 20% and see what kind of finish you get on the uh, angled portion of the raised panel. The goal would be to not have to do any sanding. And the problem is if you go to 10% or 5%, it's just going to take, there's a lot more passes that have to be made. Uh, so there's a compromise in there somewhere between uh, optimal runtime and a uh, optimal finish. So we're going to start at 20% and then I would just suggest see what that looks like. And if it looks good, that's great. And if you, it's not as smooth as you want it, then just uh, reduce that to 15 or 20% and try it again. And you sh you'll find a happy medium there between speed and uh, finish quality. Okay, so we're gonna just uh, click OK out of this. Now, how this works with the molding toolpath is we have to select a drive rail, which is one of these four lines that we created. Uh, and then we have to hold the shift key down and see, select uh, the profile that we're gonna cut. In this case, it would be this angled line. Now, what we're looking for when we do this is the cutter is gonna be moving in this direction where that's gonna be our toolpath, but you see these lines, these lines represent the angle from the top to the bottom. And what we want is we want these lines to be going from uh, this line down to this rectangle line. So we want it to be opposite what it is. Now, what we can do there is just quickly switch to node editing by hitting the letter N on your keyboard and then come down. You'll see that this green um, square and then there's a black square. The green square denotes the starting point of the when the tool comes in engagement, it's going to move in this direction. You'll see the arrows. We want to change the start point down to uh, this black square. So we right click and you can either hit the letter P on your keyboard or just click make start point. OK, and then we're going to click away, hit the escape key to get the arrow back. We're going to click on the uh, vertical line and then again on this uh, profile right here. And you can see now that the uh, direction of the toolpath is going this way, but the lines are going from that vertical line to the outside of this rectangle, which is what we want. And then we just click calculate. And you'll see the toolpath there. You can see it's got an angle to it. If I preview that, you can see right there, I've now uh, used a ball nose and I've carved in that angle. So what we can do is go to this sweep profile and duplicate it. Double click on the duplicate. This time we're going to select this line. And again, we're going to select this angle on this side. Now, we're using this one instead of this one simply because that's the angle that we want. We want to go in a downward angle from the center of the panel towards the outside. This, this angle would do the opposite. It would make the angle go downward from the outside towards the center of the panel, okay? So that's what we're gonna do there. So we'll just click Calculate. Then we're gonna come and we'll duplicate it again. Double click, go over to 2D View. We're going to click on this vertical line and again on that profile. Uh, same thing, you could see here that we've got now the lines are on the wrong side. So we're going to hit N for node editing, go up to this black square, hit P. We're going to select that line and this, and you can see now we're in the direction we want. Click calculate. And then we're going to do that one more time. We're going to just duplicate this, double click, click on the bottom line, click on this profile again. Once again, you could see this is in the wrong direction that we want. Hit N, go over this black square here, make start point, click on the line, shift, and then hold this profile again. Now it looks right. Click calculate. So if we go ahead now and reset the preview and preview all tool paths, you could see what we just did. We created a perfect uh, bevel raised panel all the way around using a ball nose. So what this is going to do is it's going to move in this direction. And then it's going to slightly move over and then step down over and over and over until it's done. And when you do this right and you set up the, the correct step over for your machine and your tool that you're using, 
you'll be amazed at how smooth this angle is. And it's a perfect angle. Like if you were doing a 45 degree on this and a 45 degree on another board and you join them together to make like a box or, or a drawer, you would have a perfect miter joint uh, as if you were using like a chop saw or a table saw with a cross sled or something. So it's, it's a really, really useful tool to be able to do this. And you can create any profile. This just happens to be a, an angled profile, but you can use it to do curves and everything else. And I'll probably do some other videos showing some fancier designs in the future. Um, so there's our raised panel. Everything is good. So now we got to go on to the next step. So if we look at the uh, drawing again, I need this pocket here. So I need a pocket that goes down 0.4 inches and over 0.5 inches. All right, so in order to do that, we are going to select this and this. So those two vectors, we're gonna go over to the pocket toolpath. I'm gonna to set my cut depth to 0.4 and we're gonna choose a down cut end mill because we're pocketing down. So we want a nice clean floor and we want a nice crisp top edge. So down cut end mill is, is the tool of choice for that. And then we'll click calculate. Now I'm not going over feeds and speeds and stuff in these videos because every machine is gonna, gonna vary. And so that it's really up to you to match the feeds and speeds on these cutters to your machine, the material you're using, and the manufacturer of the cutter itself to make sure that everything works properly. So I'm not even gonna get into that. I just wanna talk about how to program this so that you can get a really professional quality raised panel door to match an existing profile that might already be in your kitchen. We'll click calculate and then we'll preview that. And so now we have our pocket going all the way around. So it's 0.4 inches down. And if you look here, you'll see the XYZ location. And if I move my mouse to the floor over the floor here, you'll see that the Z says 0.4. That's how you can verify that you're getting the cut depth that you need uh, just by looking in, in this area here. It's kind of a live reading uh, as you move your mouse, uh, what the depth is. So I got a 0.5 inch wide gap with a 0.4 deep pocket and it uh, looks pretty darn good. Uh, it's a good looking raised panel door. Now, one other thing to match the uh, drawing completely, this raised panel door has these four kind of lines in it because the door I'm trying to match was not a CNC door. It was actually made using conventional um, shaper bits and it was put together as a five piece door. So there is a, a vertical line uh, in the corners here uh, that when this vertical piece, these two vertical pieces were joined to the horizontal pieces, uh, there's a line there from, from where that joint happened. So we want to replicate that as best as possible and I kind of drew that in up here. Now the easiest way to do that is to draw a line. So we're gonna go to the line tool and we're gonna draw a line from here. And I wanna go to the edge of the door, right? So that's gonna give me a line that is uh, 2.25 inches long, all right? But I wanna go a little past the outside of the door so that my bit runs past the edge. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna change my anchor point to this lower corner. I'm gonna change this to 2.5. So I'm gonna go a quarter inch past and click apply. And you can see here that the line extends past the edge of the door. Now, rather than draw this line four times, since I made my work area the same size as my door and the distance from here to the edge is the same as here to the edge, the easiest way to do that is just use the mirror selected object tool. Check flip about job center and check create mirrored copy. Then I can click horizontal and you can see I've got my line there now in the spot. And then go ahead and click vertical and it's gonna go ahead and put that line down here and then click horizontal one more time and it's gonna flip that one over and put it here. So now I have four lines there um, just like that, super easy. Now the next thing I want to do is create a profile tool, uh, tool path. And I'm going to use, in this case, I've got a, a quarter inch 90 degree chamfer bit. So I'm not going down very deep. A 90 degree chamfer is fine. I don't need a wide bit, but if all you have is a wide bit, that's fine. Because all I'm doing is I'm going to go down 0.03, so 30 thousandths. 
That's, that's all I need. I just want to score a little line in the top of the door. I'm going to change my machine vectors to on the line because I want to score right on that line and all the way around. And I'm just going to click, uh, oh, I have to select the vectors first. So we're going to go ahead and select these, hold the shift key, select these, and then click calculate. All right, so you can see I've got a toolpath there. If I go ahead and hit preview toolpath, you could see it put a very fine line in the corners. But now this door looks exactly like a five piece door. Um, and once it's painted, you won't ever be able to tell the difference. Now, I determined the depth to be um, 30 thousandths based on a test I did uh, to match the way it looked on the existing door. Uh, you may have to play with that. You may have to go shallower or deeper. Maybe the angle, I'm using a 90 degree V-bit, which seemed to match up pretty well. Uh, but you may need to go with a 45 or a 60 if you need the line to be finer. Uh, so you, you just have to kind of play with that on yours to get the match that you want. But in this case, it looks pretty good. Now, the only other thing I don't, I'm not 100% thrilled about, if this was made in a traditional method, then you wouldn't have a radius in these corners because I'm using a quarter inch end mill to do this pocket. That means I have an eighth inch radius in this corner. So you're never gonna get away from the radius because you're using round bits. So there's no way to do a square corner. Now on the other video I did when I used the uh, V bits to do that, I did get a perfectly sharp square corner because I was using a V carving toolpath. But in this particular case, I'm using a pocketing toolpath in here and there's just no way to do it. So one way to clean that up or tighten it up is to go with a smaller diameter end mill. Now, it depends on what you have. I mean, if you have a 16th inch diameter, then that's gonna give you the tightest uh, corner you could possibly get. Um, in this case, I, I'm gonna go with an eighth inch diameter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this uh, rectangle right here and I'm gonna to go to Profile Toolpath. I'm going to set my depth to the 0.4 uh, because that's the pocket depth there. I'm gonna change my tool to an eighth inch. Uh, let's see what do I have here. I have an eighth inch down cut. I'm gonna use that and click Select. Now, it's gonna make four passes and, and that's kind of excessive because um, as the end mill runs along here, all that material has already been removed. So the only time that end mill is going to engage in your material is when it gets to the four corners. Okay, so just to save time, uh, I'm going to edit the passes and just change this to one pass uh, so that it's just going to go down 0.4. It's going to come up to the corner and just clean it up on all four corners. Now, in order to do that, you have to make sure that the cut flutes on your end mill are at least 0.4 inches tall. If they're not, you won't be able to do that. Uh, you'll have to do two passes um, at least, and then, you, and then you'll kind of be rubbing a little bit, but it'll still work. So if you had a 16th inch end mill, say with a quarter inch cut depth, um, then you'd have to do that in two passes, or if it's an eighth inch with a quarter inch cut depth, you, you gotta do it in, in more than one pass. But in this case, my end mill has a half inch cut depth, so I can do this in one pass. Uh, I wanna go inside the line because I, I all I'm going to do is just clean up the corners. So we're going to go inside and I'm just going to click calculate. Now it's going to be hard to tell because the, the graphics on the preview are not like super, super sharp, but you'll see here, uh, I'm going to zoom out just a little, maybe you can see it and we'll do a uh, preview select the toolpath and you can see how it kind of tightened that corner up now. So now instead of an eighth inch radius, it only has a 16th inch radius. And again, if you can use a 16th inch end mill, then the radius in that corner will be even smaller. It'll be a 32nd of an inch, which would be almost not even noticeable. But that looks a lot better to me and I don't, it doesn't look like uh, I cut this with a rounded bit so much. Um, so it's just something you gotta play with, something to be aware of. But in this case, this is, this is a great option when you have some dimensions, if you're trying to duplicate an existing design for a panel. Um, also, if you find that the angle here is not a traditional angle, so you can't get a V-bit with that angle, then uh, you can make the angle any way you want. In fact, you can make 
this rounded, you can make it concave. It, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you assign this profile to, that profile could be anything. It could be uh, a concave curve. It could be convex. Um, it could have a shape to it. Uh, it's going to take that vector and it's going to sweep it all the way around. So you have a lot of options there that you can do with this particular toolpath. But I'm just showing you here that this is one cool way of uh, setting up a door panel uh, to give you something that you can perfectly match to an existing set of doors you might have and even including the lines to make it look like it was a five-piece door. So any questions, let us know, info at stepcraft.us. I hope you find this video is helpful. Thank you for watching.